What up, pink ladies, T-Birds, just happen to be watchers of my shit. My name is Jimmy Pink, and I killed the teen dream. Deal with it. Wanna eat lunch with the cool kids, don't you? Told you I used to be you, I know you. So, today is day 29 of the Hunt for Pink October. For those of you that do not know what that is, that is where I have done a video wearing pink every day for the full 31 days of October. So, we almost done. Um, that is, of course, for breast cancer awareness. I am also raising money for breast cancer awareness. So, if you would, please donate to my Patreon. All October proceeds will be donated to Susan G. Coleman for the cure of Northeast Ohio. That will be the payment that comes out November 1st. I would love for you to stay my patron as YouTube is fucking with a lot of people's money. Um, but at this point, we're here to raise money for breast cancer. So if you would, please just join. And once the payment comes out, if you would like to cancel after that, that's fine. Um, but today's video is a video that's near and dear to my heart. And I think that it's going to end up starting a series. So we'll call this a, a soft launch. Um, and I'm thinking about calling it not another teen movie review. Because I fucking love teen movies. All of them. Ones you never heard of. Okay? I love them all. But today I want to talk about probably my favorite. It's definitely in my top 10 list of movies that I would consider my favorite movies. It's in the top 10. It might be it might be cracking the top 5. I didn't sit down and think about it. But it's definitely top 10. And that is, as you can see, Jawbreaker. Now, a couple different things. Um, number one, I cram to understand, and I really do... Why this is not known as one of the more classic teen movies right up there with Mean Girls and Clueless and Heathers. I don't get it. I absolutely don't get it. Like, this shit is fucking phenomenal, impactful. It came out in 1999. I was 21 years old. But of course, clearly the actresses were not teenagers. They were closer to my age, probably actually a little bit older than me. So... High school was only four years off. For me, it was only four years off. I graduated in 95 at 17 years old. But we talked about this. For those of you guys, my pink ladies and my T-birds that watched my Grease, not my Grease 2, my The Love Witch review, which is only about 50 of y'all. But I talked about why I enjoy the movie of The Love Witch because I enjoy someone who creates a whole world that I can live in. Okay? What I mean by that is, is there can be a certain amount of suspension of disbelief if I believe this would happen in this world and I feel like this world is its own world. Okay? Um, similar to The Love Witch, uh, Darren Stein, who, by the way, does follow me on Instagram and Twitter, um, probably because I talk about his movie a fucking lot. Okay? I'm talking about, let me, let me break it down for you how much... I love this movie right here. My Twitter handle several different times has been Black Courtney Shane. I have a full-fledged song that I wrote that is based on this movie. A full-fledged song. Um, I was going to do this album. My albums, that would have been my third album. They tend to be concept albums. Um, for those of y'all didn't know, I used to be a rapper. Um, they tend to be concept albums. Jimmy Pink's American Psycho now available on iTunes. You want to eat lunch with the cool kids, don't you? Told you I used to be you, I know you. Never learned to crew politics in high school. Now you earn a few funny looks in my school. I can show you how to hypnotize my school. Like the chicks in the bunny books for fly dudes. Why you? Because I see your potential. Plus the team up could be beneficial. Um... But the third album initially was going to be called Sweet Revenge. And the whole concept was going to be like teen movies. That was going to be like the whole concept. And the first song that I wrote for it was a song called The Recipe that you can find on YouTube. Um, where like, it was basically 
the, the whole thing, I mean, it's coming from my voice, but it was basically Courtney talking to Fern. Was the whole song. Like, this movie was impactful. I wish I had it. I lost that computer that had the artwork. The artwork for the album, I never even got to do the photo shoot yet. But I was doing the background, and it looked like this. It was different colors because Sweet Revenge, I didn't want to look exactly like Jawbreaker, but, I mean, the lettering was the same. The triple colors, except for it was like baby pink, yellow, and baby blue, and it had ice cream on the bottom instead of Jawbreakers. It even had the damn legs coming out of it. Like, Challenger. For the lucky number seventh time, reacting to the showdown, the Flamingo Kid, Jimmy Ping. Oh, this is a little bit more glamorous than the one just to sing. Oh, yeah, that's a little baby jawbreaker. I'm just going to keep my eyes shut. Well, it is a little Halloween movie. It was referenced in that Halloween movie, though, so not that cool enough. All right, good. Well, let's see how she does today. I killed the snowdown. I killed the teen dream. Deal with it. Deuces. This movie is impactful to me. The fashion. The fucking fashion in this movie. I still fucking... That shit was impactful to a 21 year old girl. That shit was impactful. To this day, I still wear clutch bags. Cardigan sweaters. Straight skirts. Stockings with the sins up the back. And quite naturally... You think the colors didn't attract me? You know, like... I wear a lot of black now because I'm older and life got me fucked up and you dress how you feel. I wear a lot of black. But, like this movie had a huge impact on me. Now with that being said, I also want to say one of my other favorite teen movies probably is number two in line. Unless we're counting Grease and Grease, unless we're counting like Grease, Grease 2 as teen movies, which technically they are. But let's shelve that because that's really a musical. My next favorite is probably Heather's, and the influence of Heather's is all over this movie. It's a dark comedy, it's centered around murder in a high school, all the way down to the principal's name being Miss Sherwood, and the high school in Heather's was Sherwood, they was in Sherwood, Ohio. Think I didn't remember that? You don't hear Ohio a lot. Um, but the four girls, the girl that used to be nerdy, being popular... even as much as the girl falling for the guy that quick. It's not a retelling, it's not the same story, but it's definitely Heather's influences all over this movie. So if you like Heather's and you've never seen Jawbreaker, you need to get up on that right now. Um, I did take some notes. I did rewatch the movie, I didn't have to. But I knew that there would probably be some things because when I get passionate, as my pink ladies and T-Burrs know, I just start spouting out at the mouth and I'll forget some shit and be like, oh, I meant to say that. So I took a few notes. Um, first of all, let's talk about the cast. Let's talk about the cast. Because there is, I can't think of another movie, honest to God, where it was this many actors and actresses that I liked in the movie. I can't think of one that has this many. Um, even in cameo appearances, maybe Walk Hard to Dewey Cox Story. I watch a lot of shit, and I watch a lot of shit that don't get its just due. Maybe that should be the series, because I watch a lot of movies that don't get the props that it should get, because Dewey Cox is some good shit, too. Um, but, Rose McGowan. I would probably say this is the movie that made me a Rose McGowan fan. Like, I watch Scream. I'm not a scary movie person. Yeah, I grew up in the 90s. Like, Scream was that shit. Okay, but she was good at Scream. But Scream was just okay to me. Like it's, it, it doesn't resonate with me. Back then it was good, but it don't resonate with me like this does. Um, then of course, while all of y'all is like, oh, Amber Rose and J Lo and these outfits they wear to the award show. Rose McGowan is the motherfucking original with the net motherfucking dress, bitch. She the original. Um, Charmed, of course. Oh, come on, man. Death. Death Proof 
and Planetary. Y'all know I love Tarantino and I love Robert Rodriguez and the Grindhouse series. Is she and both of them? Like, Rose McGowan is my bitch. And also, for any of y'all that ain't hashtag Rose Army, that is actually trying to get on this girl because she took a settlement when she was basically beginning her career and knew she couldn't fight that shit and took a settlement and is now speaking out and saying, yes, I got raped and these motherfuckers is covering for this dude. If you one of them, you can click the fuck off this video right now because I don't even fuck with you. You can, we don't want your subscriptions over here. Um, but anyway, so that's Rose McGowan. I fucking love Judy Greer. This is my introduction to Judy Greer, too. I fucking love Judy Greer. First of all, hands, anybody? Bueller? Anybody watch Archer? Oh my god, Cheryl might be my favorite character. Well, you know, I, I'm partial to Lana for obvious reasons. But, oh my god, Cheryl, Carol, Cheyenne, she... I just fucking love Judy Greer, but I've also seen her in a bunch of other movies. 13 going on 30. Um, She's she been in too much shit. You want to know what she all been in? Just go on IMDb because she's a character actress and she's really fucking good. She's really fucking funny and she's been in a ton of shit. Um, of course, if we're going to talk about Judy Greer, you know I got to talk about my girl Pam Greer. Okay? I did a review about Jackie Brown. Pam Greer is the fucking coldest. She's a beast. I was like, when I first seen this movie, and it said Pam Greer, I was like, yo! What the fuck Pam Greer been doing? Like, I was so, like, hype. Um, Carol Kane. I mean, the Princess Bride, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. I'm trying to, like, jump around their career to a point because, but her? Oh, my God. Y'all y'all probably don't remember. Oh, sexy transition because it's going to come. Y'all probably don't remember Taxi. Taxi is before my time, but I watched a lot of Nick at Night. Like, I'm just a cinephile, a TV foul, a music foul, a pop culture foul. And, like, he, she was Andy Kaufman's girlfriend on there. Like, I forgot what her name was. Like, Carol Kane is that bitch, for real. Um, so you can't go wrong with her. Um, sexy transition while I'm talking about Taxi. Motherfucking Kanicki is in this bitch. If y'all watch my Grease 2, he ain't even in Grease 2, and I had like a five minute fucking speech about Kanicki. I fucking love Kanicki. And I loved him on Taxi, and when I found out he was in this, and he's so bitch made in this, but it's so hilarious. He's so funny in this. He in it for this long, but he's so funny. He is so funny. I've got to be the mom and the dad. I think we're alone now. It doesn't seem to be anyone around. <laughs> that shit is hilarious. That shit is fucking hilarious. Um, and then, of course, we have cameos from, um, not Hillary. What was her name? Um, Ashley from The Fresh Prince. And um, what's the other bitch name? And Lori Foreman from That 70s Show. So we get cameos from them, too. And I swear it's a couple people in this movie that I didn't see in them other shit and I couldn't place them. But they wasn't in One of them girls that was the Violet um, groupies, like, that was dressing like her and shit. That blonde one, I done seen that bitch somewhere, but I don't, I can't remember where. Um, damn, we already like 13 minutes in. Like, this going to be a long review because this movie means something to me. Okay, so I mentioned the fashion, but I want to talk about the world building and how everything was like so brightly colored to reflect a movie that's named after a piece of fucking candy. Like, how fucking slick was, slick was that? I also want to mention the fact that they always had on hoop earrings. And if y'all have seen any of my other videos, when do I fucking not? I've been wearing hoops forever. Definitely since this movie. I was wearing them before, but I was wearing other kinds of earrings. This movie came back around. And I was like, you know what? Hoops don't go out of style. And I never stopped wearing them since. Um, but just also the use of color I want to talk about. And I've talked about... Those of y'all my pink ladies and T-birds that watch my Riverdale reviews, I brought it up in Riverdale a lot because I, especially as, you know, having a degree in graphic design, like I'm very attracted to color. So I've always noticed certain things about the movie that had to do with the coloring. Notice when we first meet the girls and everything is peachy fucking keen, you're going to stretch your shit down the hallway. It's Courtney and Red like she the fucking devil. 
flanked by these two, Julie and Marcy. Julie and Marcy basically almost got on the same fucking outfit. Okay. It's like that girl group thing. Like, y'all got on the same... Y'all really got on the same outfit. It's some differences. It's not exactly the same, but y'all got on the same outfit. Same color scheme, like them blue, turquoise, lime green. That was huge back then. I remember that. But they're flanking her. And then here's Courtney in all red. Ain't got on nothing they got on. Run that back to the first time we see Fern walk with them. Now we got Courtney in all purple. Fern, Violet. Because it's all about Violet. The one-liners in this bitch. Oh, my God. But, you know, she wear pink the whole time. So, we see her in a pink floral dress. And what do Marcy got on? A pink fucking floral dress. Flanking Courtney. The parallels, like, you see it on the surface level. Like, okay, when well, the three of them is walking down the hallway again. No, them motherfuckers is flanking her. There is no... Lady die of Reagan High no more, right? Lady die of Reagan High die eyed. Okay? So it's her world. Y'all my minions. And the colors reflect that so much. If you notice in the movie, for a great deal of it, when it's all three of them and Violet is part of them, Marcia always has on pink too. It might not be the same shade of pink. It might not be pink from head to toe. But she always got on pink too. And Courtney always has a color that stands out from them. She flanked their, their minions. And they pointed out through color. Once you realize that Julie is not a part of them and Julie wears blue for the majority of the movie, then once she's out, we no longer see Marcy in blue ever again. That's also something to show you that Marcy is a follower and she don't have her own mind. I want to talk about one more scene about the color. And that is when they tear Fern down and let everybody know that Violet is Fern. So now we got Julie in her blue. We got Violet in her pink. Now for those of y'all that know anything about movie tropes, TV tropes, what have you. Usually when you have a superhero team or do or anything like that. One of them is going to be red, one of them is going to be blue. Those are usually the main two. And then if there's a group, there's other colors. But it's usually red, blue, green, and it'll go in the yellow. If it's female, they change that red to pink. In that scene, here's Julian, are all blue. Here's Violet, now far male again, in her pink. And we see Marcy... And Courtney, obviously she's not going to have the same color as Courtney. Courtney's not on her level. But something that is, this is the perfect way to explain it to y'all. Comic books. When comic books first started, and that's why you have like the Joker and the Riddler against like Superman and Batman. The good guys wear primary colors. Red, yellow, and blue. And again, pink is substituted usually when it's a female. The bad guys wear secondary colors. Purple, orange, and green. In that scene, Courtney has on purple. Marcy got on orange. So it's like a very clear cut. Good guys versus bad guys. That shit is unmotherfucking real to me. Like that shit is so slick and I love a movie that can do that because it's telling you a story. It's lying underneath. And it's so fucking dope to me. When they do shit like that. Um, what else? These one-liners. Honey. This is why I don't understand how this movie is not more popular. Or how it is not held up with the mean girls and the cluelesses of the world. I don't. These one-liners. Hi, Fern. Who's Fern? My name is Violet. What? Violet. Learn it. Live it. Love it. Come on, for real? Oh, okay, I'm sorry. We'll just edit that probably. Um, everybody's favorite scene. Any woman in the world, this is your favorite scene. Real shit. When motherfucking Rose McGowan and her boyfriend come over, she was talking about she wanted some cake. And she had him sucking that popsicle like a dick. 
that is every woman's fantasy right there, believe it or not. You don't, no tea, no shade against my gaze. Y'all know I love my gaze. But it's something about sucking a man's dick. And maybe my gay men can relate to this too. My bottoms or my gay men. But it's just something about that that you just know they have. You, you want to think you got the power, but then they start doing shit like pushing your head down and shit like that. And you just be like, or grabbing your head and you just be like, okay, I just lost all control of this situation. So when she's making him suck that popsicle like it's a dick while she's sucking his dick. And then she, the doorbell ring and he says, don't go. And she turns around and says, don't come. Man, that is that is like oh my god! But it's so many moments like this in this movie. It's so dope. Um, of course, the intro of what I opened it, and of course that was a huge plot point too. So of course I got to include I I killed Liz. I killed the team Dream. Deal with it, obviously. Um, this is high school detective. What is a friend anyway? Who can't relate to that? That was in high school. Um, the whole scene between Violet, when Violet get full of herself, and Courtney, and that face off, that shit is fucking filled with fucking lines that just are quotable as fuck. Like, do tell, dear. <laughs> that shit, like, I'll destroy you. Oh, I got a cigarette right here. I can do it. And I'll tell a secret. Like, that shit is so fucking sick. That whole scene right there is sickening. I'm at the mercy of the crowd, Courtney. They love to hate me. I'm just doing what you taught me. We taught you to disrespect us. You taught me to rule. Rule, bitch. But don't forget who made you. Like, that whole fucking scene right there is just epic. Man, Rose McGowan is fuck Regina George. Okay, I'm sorry. I like mean girls. Fuck Regina George. This the baddest motherfucking mean girl ever. She is the fucking coldest. Fuck whichever Heather was the one that had on red or the one that had on green. Fuck all of them. She the bad. She is the baddest mean girl out of all of them. Like them lines is killer. Um, what else I got? Oh, when her and Julie face off in the locker that they ripped off on um, Riverdale a couple weeks ago. Um, it's over, Courtney. I. And petrified and she just walk away listen I don't understand I don't understand um, also I want to go back to the color because I did want to bring this up as well I want to go back to um, Fern always wearing pink this is another thing that she probably should have went with the store when I was talking about how the use of color is from the very beginning of the movie when she's explaining the four characters and she says, like, Julie was doomed. She was going to be popular strictly off the fact that she was pretty. And she said, because she was best friends with the one in the pink. And then she's showing, like, the one time Liz Purr was the only person that was ever nice to her because she dropped her paper and Liz Purr picked her shit up. She had on pink. So, now all of a sudden, Fern Mayo don't wear, when she's Violet, don't wear shit else but pink. I thought that was kind of a cool nod to like you really looked up to Liz Per that fucking much when they told you take her place. You really fucking got stuck in that moment and took her fucking place. Um, finally, I'm just gonna say like this soundtrack is so fucking dope. Now I know my pink ladies and T-birds know like the super East Coast hip hop chick. It's talking about like this alternative rock soundtrack is dope. Listen, that I who I who she said you who I who I who that shit goes so fucking hard. Volcano girls, but I always fucked with uh, Veruca Salt anyway. Um, the use of rock you like a hurricane when she go in there and seduce Marilyn Manson so she can set her up, set him up to take the downfall for the murder. The soundtrack is everything. All I can say is I need to go ahead and wrap this up because I know I've been talking at length and I could talk for another hour about this movie. Like, legit. Um, if you've never seen it, you need to go get that. That's why I got the t-shirt. Like, this is my shit. This ain't even shit you can go get. What y'all sleep? Darren Stein ain't even motherfucking verified on Twitter. What the fuck? 
Why the fuck is this shit not streaming on Hulu? Netflix. At least fucking crackle. Um, and it would be on HBO occasionally, but it'd be movies to be on HBO every other fucking month to me. And I'd be like, well, where's Jawbreaker? I gotta wait another fucking three years for y'all to decide y'all wanna put Jawbreaker on again? I don't know. I own the movie. I actually meant to bring the DVD with me, but I'm not in my home at the current moment. So I wanted to bring it with me. I also wanted to buy a Jawbreaker. Like, I wanted to. I was going to do the shit out of this video um, to the point of I'm not even putting it up like this. I'm actually going to go edit it after being awake for like 14 hours and I'm going to go home and stay woke for like another three so I can edit this because I need this fucking review. I need it to, I need y'all to feel me for, for my love of this fucking movie. Um, so with that being said, I do not want you to forget about the reason why I'm doing so many videos this month and that is for breast cancer awareness so again if you could please donate to my Patreon all October proceeds will go to Susan G. Coleman for the cure of Northeast Ohio also if you are not a pink lady or a t-bird go ahead and subscribe you can click down there click that dumbass notification bell because you will not know when videos come up without it sparingly they do that shit sparingly wrong team movie I know but um but click or click on Sailor Jimmy at the end of the video. And if you want to check out some other videos before you subscribe, YouTube will pick one out right for you. So wait till the end of the video. It'll pop up. It'll suggest one for you. Click on that and then subscribe. I'm trying to get to 3,000 by the end of the year. To my patrons, as always, love y'all to death. I think I got an idea what I'm going to do for you guys for Christmas, but you'll just have to wait. We got two more days of this shit first. So let's get through this. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate each and every one of you who took the time to watch this, especially because I know this is a long fucking video. But I'm passionate about this movie. I need more people to know about it. It needs to be... I don't even think people consider it a cult classic. I'm like, what the fuck? This movie is fucking awesome. I don't get it. I'm going to calm down and let y'all go. Deuces. Kamehameha attack is blazing, I'm so amazing Japanimation, the anime on your cartoon station So fulfilling, no adults swimming for about an hour Revealing power, unorthodox amongst these cowards Full transformation for Optimus Prime transformation A good vibration from Rumble packed in with inspiration In my beginning, God created a lyricist Saga continues